Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan. For those who are new to my channel, I usually make beauty videos. So this is going to be a little bit different from the rest of my videos. But if you would like to check out my videos, then you can go ahead and subscribe. And this video is going to be on my BTS at Jimmy Kimmel experience with the outdoor mini concert. And whew, um, I honestly didn't think that I would be seeing BTS this soon. Like, I would have never thought that I would be seeing this tune. This is all happening, I honestly think, way too fast. Like, ever since the American Music Awards announcement, we, all of a sudden, all, all these pro gigs, like, U.S. gigs, like, James Corden, Ellen, and then Jimmy Kimmel, and then all of a sudden, with this mini outdoor theme concert came out, it was like, I had to go, I had to go. So, um... It was all, I want to say about Thursday morning, the week before, the week before the uh, concert, which was on a Wednesday, I believe, and um, I was on, I woke up on Twitter, and my mutual, uh, one of my friends, Viv, on Twitter, hey girl, um, she sent me a screenshot of the uh, link to the outdoor concert that they just released, and it was like not even, I want to say about 10 or 15 minutes when um, a popular Twitter stand account posted the picture of it and I immediately was like oh I have to go back to sleep uh, I was gonna go back to sleep but then I was and then I checked my schedule and everything and I did not have work that day so praise and I literally went requested that shit so fast put my name type in my name so fast and then I got it and then um it was all waitlist by the way because everyone by the time you request it you're automatically put on waitlist because you know they just came out and then I want to say not even an hour later the tickets sold out like the BTS tickets requesting sold out. And mind you, this is free, by the way, because talk shows, these tickets are usually free. And, um, yeah, it's free, free, free tickets to BTS. Hello. So I waited and waited. I was talking to my friend Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Uh, who wanted to go as well. I wish she was able to make it with me. You know, we could have met, you know, we could have met, you know, connected, you know, us, us. We were talking about booking flights and everything. And she was looking at flights. Um, I was looking at flights. And then I ended up, booking a flight and booking an airbnb mind you the tickets i don't even know if i'm getting the tickets yet so not even an hour later um a little bit more later i checked my email it said to confirm my tickets that means bitch, i got it. i was freaking the fuck out um i was literally texting tracy i was literally tweeting i was like oh my god i got the jimmy kimball tickets keyboard smash you know i was in disbelief i was i must have been dreaming i obviously confirmed those tickets right away I really didn't think I was going to be seeing this tune. I was expecting to see BTS not even until, like, their next tour. And this just opportunity came out all of a sudden. And it was just, like, it was honestly the perfect timing to see BTS because I got into them this year. Going on to next week, um, my flight at on Wednesday was at 8.46. However, my dad took me to the airport at around 5 because... He wanted me to get there as early as possible before he got to work. And I got there, I did my makeup, because I know, knowing the fact that people will line up, because this is the armies and this is BTS. So you best believe that I'm going to get there as early as possible. So I got there, did my makeup, waited, waited, did my makeup, and then waited until 8. We boarded the plane, flew to LA, uh, flew into Long Beach Airport, and then we got there, I Ubered to my Airbnb, and along the way, we had to carpool someone. I was just, we'll get onto that later. And then it got to my Airbnb at around 11 something. And then I changed so fast because I checked in so fast and I changed and everything because I already did my makeup and everything. And I put on my outfit on and everything. And it was this, the Nasty Gull shirt. And ugh, I, lo I love that shirt so much. Oh my gosh. I'll insert pictures later. And I planned a little beforehand that there was going to be in and out near the venue. The venue that Jimmy Kimmel mini outdoor concert was going to be usually held at. And so I Ubered again to in and out And then there was another carpool. Also, I prefer Lyft over Uber. I'm sorry. I know Uber is cheaper. But I feel like carpooling wastes my time. I could have gotten there earlier and everything. But anyways, I got to in and out got my food. And then I walked to the venue. Now, the venue, it's pretty much on the left of like one of the sides of in and out and then I turned and right in front of a high school. I believe the Hollywood High School, I believe. And then I got there. You can tell that where the venue is because it's like right there. And there's literally the line starting. Now, people have been lining up since 5 a.m. the day before. 
5 a.m. the day before. I literally saw like the tent up, the little holder up and everything, and there's chairs. That's when you know that that was the start of the line. I was walking, walking, walking. The line goes on and on and on, and the line is long. It wrapped around, wrapped around, and wrapped around, and wrapped around until it got to the point where you could see the back of where they, the boys would be getting into the venue. Um, that's where we um, stopped at our, our line ended. I made some new friends with Jessica, Amanda, Alira, and Kathy. Hey, you guys. Love you guys. Um, it, the experience would not have been like this if it was without you guys, you know? And I really appreciate y'all, and um, I'm so glad we met. We talked and talked, talked about our biases and everything, and we, um, I was eating and everything, and then there was someone who passed out food and someone who passed out water, which was really sweet of them, and, um, we, and then I got little chips and everything, we talked and talked and talked, and then mind you, while all this is happening, the, the Korean who, um, do the Jesus Christ or something, like, like, so, like, they were going off and on. They had the mega horn and everything going back and forth. Like it's like they knew BTS was gonna be there, and they think they were. They they thought they thought that we needed help or something like that. Like it was just <laughs> like we already had BTS. Thank you very much. So they kept back and forth, whatever, whatever. And then time goes on, time goes on. Our line starts moving. Now when our line starts moving, it's almost like they were letting us in, but not really. It was just like a little. It's like a little, little thing. Pretty much where we're on the side facing and then we turn the right and that, that would be the venue and the parking lot so we were standing there and we were just waiting waiting jamming jam um talking talking um waiting waiting anticipating the moment and then i took out outfit of the day pictures um i took you know with my army bomb and everything and um amanda took them so credits to her and i i was face tuning it and then i <laughs> and then i was uploading them on twitter and instagram and so, as soon as I upload on Instagram with the hashtag BTSXJimmyKimmel and then XJimmyKimmel Live, I wanted those hashtags, you know. I wanted people to see it. And so, my picture blew up on Twitter, Stan Twitter. And I was Twitter famous for like a hot minute. Someone saved the pictures and re-uploaded it and said, I wish I could be like him when I grow up. And it, we became mutuals. Hey, girl. That screenshot got onto Instagram's one of the... BTS fan Instagrams. It was it was just like oh my gosh like this is really getting around, and like I'll post a picture here of all the screenshots, wherever of all the screenshots of my Twitter famous post. <laughs> I've gotten so many compliments on my shirt by the way, like so many compliments. The shirt because the shirt is beautiful, designed by um, Nasty Girl. Hey girl, love you. I believe her name is Tia or. Or her Twitter handle, Gwendolyn. Um, I'm not, I'm sorry, I don't know your exact name, but I love you. Thank you so much for designing this shirt. Amazing, amazing. You can, I'll link the, just her Instagram and website down below. She doesn't have um, any merch right now. She is going to release more, you know. She is going to release this, the same exact shirt in another color soon. Which I will be getting, obviously, for my next BTS gig. Compliments. I got the whole bunch of combos throughout the whole day, and I was so thankful and because I was not there to play, okay, I was there to stunt and also get my life, okay. Uh, there, by the time the sun was started setting, it started to get um, somewhat dark, but not completely dark yet. We could still see the sky and everything. It was, it was kind of gloomy, but it was also hot um, at one point. Um, even though it was, there was, it was sunny. We, bang, BTS's cars started pulling in and everything. We all started flipping the fuck out. Like I heard a scream, and then literally my heart leaped. And, like, my life flashed before my eyes, and we were looking at all the, the black, you know, tinted window cars, and BTS was in there. We were all screaming. I was freaking out. I was just, I was not ready. So I was not ready for Bangtan, okay? We are going around and everything, and then they dropped off the boys in the very back, obviously, because, you know, they can't just drop them off in the front, because, you know, we'd go crazy. So we were waiting there, waiting there, and apparently beforehand, BTS was FaceTiming um, at the Jimmy Kimmel, um actual Jimmy Kimmel show with the fans in front of the line. So they got to FaceTime with these um, moms and these armies in the front. Now mind you, 
there's a bunch of armies who couldn't get in, so they were doing the craziest shit ever. Um, they were standing on cars, standing on fences on the other side, just trying to get a piece of BTS, you know, because they, they either didn't have a ticket or they're still on weightless, you know? Like, they started off with something we didn't, we've never heard before. It was like, almost like a surprise performance. We were still in line, by the way, and it was the Mic Drop remix, because we could tell it was Mic Drop, they were seeing Mic Drop, but it was just, it was different. It was the Steve Aoki remix. And we were all singing, going off in the line. We were all going off in line. You guys will see in the Snapchat footage later. And um, we were going off. And then Jim, Jimin's voice, he, he like sang, but he growled at the same time. At one point, we all started screaming. Uh, I started freak freaking out. And then at one point during sound check, um, in one of the other songs, Nam June, he like he, sp he his voice boomed through the mic, and I I started, I was not ready. I was just nervous the whole entire time. I I don't I don't think my life was all together at that point. And so we waited, we waited. I keep saying we waiting. I need to shut up. Um, we as soon as they finished sound check, it was getting really dark now, like almost light, a uh, nighttime. I forgot to mention that during the line at one point, they had Jimmy Kimmel camera crews filming us in line cheering and stuff and I think I was in, in one of them me and my friends were in one of them by the time it was dark they started letting us in and they told us to stay in line and everything we kept backing up back and we had to keep telling people to back up back up because everyone's always always together in line but we were in general our line was really organized and we listened and everything as soon as we got closer and closer, and as soon as I got to peek in the fence, because mind you, all the fans in the front got to peek inside to see what Bangtan was doing sound check. Those lucky armies got to sneak peek of Bangtan. When I when we got to that point, I could already see the stage perfectly. I started freaking, like, I started, I don't, I didn't know what was going to happen. So we got up to security, everything, everything, mind you. Um, security was really strict on bags so you had to bring like me a mini bag and everything i had to put my drawstring bag in like Ilira's car um and then um i just bought like my my army bomb light stick bag and i just kept my stuff in there that's all they bought and we got in and then this we were already so close to the stage oh my gosh like we were so close and then at first it was all cool and collected we waited we waited until it was time to announce they closed the gates and then they the host started to announce are you ready for BTS? They're trying to. They were hyping us up like so. <laughs> I was not ready, <laughs> and like <laughs> we. And then he was like, "Are you ready for BTS?" Blah blah blah. And then the uh, they would film us overhead with the camera, and we would have wave our army bombs, you know, like yes. All it was all cool and collected. We were waiting, and I was like, "Oh, this is so chill. I like how Pit is like like this general ed is so chill so far." Um, bitch, I was wrong because as soon as Bangtan started coming out there was a wave of pushing and like people were unnecessarily pushing like what was the point I can't wrap my mind around the fact that why are you guys pushing we are already so close to Bangtan and you guys are literally at where you guys are they're literally 20 feet away like they are literally right there and you want just to get close like y'all are so rude <laughs> trying to push us, we can't, we had, everyone was just telling them to stop pushing, like, there was just a huge amount of push, and it was uncomfortable, and then, uh, Alira and Kathy got pushed up to the front, and they were, they were really not in a good situation, and then we were just, we were separated from those two, and then we, I see, and as soon as BTS came out, I see y Yungi's, Yungi, I saw Yungi first, because he was right after the stage worker, I started going, like, like, Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, screaming, the, go, and like, I see Namjoon's face, BITCH! <sighs> and then I see, like, uh, I see all the boys, they look so, so my god. <sighs> and then, they were, uh, I, I, I look at Hoseok, and I just literally, I wanted to leap at Hoseok. I'll tell you why later, I'm just, oh my god. And anyway, so, they started with My Drop Remix. And it was one of the litest remixes I've ever seen, I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, it was all in English. I kind of knew, bef we all knew beforehand that it was all going to be in English because of Twitter. I wish the amps were louder because of the fact that we, our screams were drowning out. I feel like our screams were drowning out the music and also drowning out their voices. And I was, I was, I was screaming, but at the same time I wasn't because 
I couldn't really I couldn't really sing along for most most of the song because of the fact that I did not know the English words and it felt weird to sing the Korean words, you know, over it. So I was just literally going like in awe like of them performing and oh my god. <sighs> oh my god and then I didn't know any of the words because it was all in English until to funny yourself like the, the that whole ending part and then oh my oh my god. It was, it was just, it was, it was, it was so, it was, it was turned. Okay? It was turned. <sighs> Anyways, and then they moved on to Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Now, I forgot to mention that they didn't want, they didn't let us film Mic Drop or uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears because they wanted most of that footage to be uploaded for Jimmy Kimmel and everything. Um, so that it doesn't look like we have all our cameras out and everything. So, and plus Mic Drop isn't supposed to be released until like this until like this week as i'm from now i'm filming this week and so or the following week i'm not sure i forgot when it was released i gotta ch look up on that i wasn't really i was a f i love blood and swear tears however it gets annoying um it gets a little bit repetitive because you know everyone knows that song but when I tell you, when BTS performs Blood, Sweat, and Tears in person, all those thoughts went out the window. I went off to Blood, Sweat, and Tears, okay? I went off. Oh my, like, I, I love Blood, and Sweat, and Tears so much more than I already thought, like, like, I, be, before it was just like, eh, but now I, like, love Blood, Sweat, and Tears. It's just, oh my god, like, I, I mean, I liked it beforehand. It was just, like, after seeing it in person, it's, like, even more... And, like, I have a huge different opinion on it now. It's like, I love it. Oh, my gosh. It goes off. And so, after Blood's, um, and then Cookie's legs were in the air during, um, Cookie's legs were in the air, like, way too many times. It was so high in the air. Oh, my God. Then they moved on to Go-Go. Go-Go, bitch! Yolo, 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 yeah? Oh, my gosh. So, they did Go-Go. It was just, it was so good. They, the dance moves, the backpack kid... And this the whole dance was saying it was just so fun. Like it kept us it was it was they were they were having so much fun up there. They performed Save Me. Save Me is one of my favorite BTS songs ever. And like yeah, they were performing all the hits. Uh, they were performing all the hits. And so Save Me was everything. The whole choreo was amazing. I just can't I really have no words to say when it comes to BTS. I was just oh then they performed I Need You. At, during I Need You, the crew messed up by playing Fire first. And they played Fire, and then they cut it off. And then they played I Need You, but it was like a couple seconds late, like later than usual. It was it was weird. Y'all need to get it together. Um, and then after that, they, uh, oh, and then, oh, and then Jungkook's little, no, 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 you know that ending where he does the, he spins and then he does the that part. I don't know how to, you know, the front kick or whatever. It was just, it was everything. And then, what was next? They performed Fire, Fire. I don't think I'll ever get tired of Fire, especially after seeing it in person. It was turnt, it was lit AF. Oh my god, oh my gosh. It's just, this is just me having, rambling on about BTS and how good their show was. The only thing I wish was the amps, I wish the amps were louder, and I also wish their mics were louder so I could hear their voice more, even though I did hear their voices, obviously, and they sounded amazing live. I just, I wanted, I wanted to hear more. This fan, she was, like, literally fanning everyone, and she was fanning me, too. She was so sweet, and then she, like, threw up in front of us later on, and I felt really bad. It was gross, but it, it felt really bad. And then also, um, my friends, Kathy and Lyra, they're having such a hard time. It's, they had to deal with, like, rude fans crushing them and everything and like this there's one guy was being really rude to kathy because her head was being squished in, in between them on accident because we're there and put being pushed and then like he was yelling at her and everything and like just people were just being rude okay there were two rude fans um they were korean and they were i'm very sure they were from one of the fan uh, fan sites this girl, she sh she's been texting her friend the whole time, and then it was it wasn't until during before BTS came on, she like dragged her friend, and then her friend was all being dramatic on the floor, like oh my gosh, oh my gosh, like girl, you, you y'all could have moved to the back, and then the girl was tall, okay? They literally blocked a, um, they literally blocked a lot of people, especially since there was and a lot of people were shorter and everything, so she literally blocked everyone because she was mad tall. And like they kept trying to push, move away, and it was just it was a it was just a mess. Apparently they were being rude to other people too with their cameras. I don't know how they brought their cameras in there. 
um, for the, t to take pictures because security was strict on that. But like she apparently they were using people's heads to take pictures. Now finding out that there it's a it was a Taehyung fan site and then it was a Jungkook fan site and I followed the Jungkook fan site. I was like, oh nope, canceled. Bye, bye, girl. Bye. Unfollow. Um, great pictures, but you know apparently you're a song too. But bye. Moving on. The whole show was just it was um, it was beyond overwhelming and. There was no time to breathe. It was harder because being in general admission, being in a pit, it you you would it's so sweaty and hot. And it wasn't during one point and towards the end where the breeze just came, and we we're like, thank you for the breeze. I was like, thank you for the breeze. Thank you. Like it, I was really thankful for the breeze. And so, <laughs> because it was so hot in that pit, and it was just being squished up together and everything. And then you know I had to. We we all had army bombs in the air. People were blocking whatever, whatever. It was hard to see at certain points because people were in the way. Um, it was just, yeah. The whole show, it was... I would do it, I honestly, even though as much as Pit, how annoying Pit is, I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. <sighs> Anyways, let's talk about the members now. So... Let's start with Namjoon. Kim Namjoon RM. Oh, he's he's beautiful. He, oh my gosh, he he's he's definitely my BTS bias. Um, and I changed bias in BTS like in like now like three times in total. But now I, don't. anyways, he's literally he's much more. Like people say, he's much more beautiful in person. Um, pictures don't do him justice at all. And mind you, pictures don't do any of BTS justice at all. Their beauty and presence, like I said, like I've said a million times, was heightened by times a million. They, they literally look so unreal in real life. They look like they were photoshopped, and I'm saying that in the, the best way possible. Oh my god, I was immediately sh like, I feel like I feel like that meme of, of Drake being going like this. You know, you know that meme of Drake, um, the rapper Drake, um, going like this. Like that, that was literally me the whole time, especially especially when BTS came out. Just the whole time, Namjoon is, he's so, he's mad tall, and he, he had that silver hair, it was killing me, um, he's big, oh my gosh, and then, moving on to, Sook Jin, um, Jin, Kim Sook Jin, he literally looks exactly like the way he does in pictures, and I'm saying that in the best way possible, like, he literally looks like how he does in pictures, beautiful, gorgeous, visual, visual king, worldwide handsome, that's how he looks in pic, that's how he looks in person, but in a good way, obviously. And he blew it. Well, at one point, he like blew a kiss at us, a couple kisses, and I, we, a bitch was not ready. Okay, a bitch was not ready for a Kim So Jin kiss in person. Okay. And then moving on to Min Yoongi. Min Yoongi, uh, again, pictures don't do him justice at all. From what I could tell, he was thick. He's a small boy. Okay, he's like this. He's like the smallest. Um, he's like the shortest out of BTS. He's a small boy. But he was thick. Like, I don't know what he was eating, but he was eating that good good, okay? He looked really good. And he had the bandana on. Oh, my God. He looked, oh, he, had, he, had the, he had smirked at one point. He was smiling. Oh. Sugar, sugar. Um, and then moving on to Jung Ho Suk. Jung Ho Suk. Hobie, J-Hope. Now, I've been warned many times from fan fan accounts and friends that J-Hope is a distraction. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, OMG, okay. Um, but I really didn't think he would come for me like that. Like, I've been knew that J-Hope was amazing. We all love J-Hope, or at least you should, you know. Like, you, you, if you don't love whole suck, something's wrong with you. Um, but seeing him in person, he was one of the first people, when BTS was coming out, J-Hope was one of the first m of the members to smile at us. He literally radiated so much. I, like, like, the whole time during the concert, I couldn't stop looking at J-Hope. I really couldn't. Like, he's literally, it's unexplainable. Pictures don't do, like, I'm stressing, I can't stress this enough. Pictures don't do them justice at all, especially Jung ho -suk. Jung Ho Suk was the most good looking one out of all of them in person. Like, and they're all good look. Oh my god. Like, I couldn't stop looking at him. Me and Jessica, we were going through it. Like, Jung. 
like Hosuk really ruined our lives. He was being so rude. He was being nasty with like his hips and every like he kept smirking. He kept giving us facials. I was literally so stressed. Like I kept looking at him. I looked at Hosuk more than Namjoon, and Namjoon's my bias. Anyways, I now double bias Namjoon and Namjoon and Hosuk. Hosuk really. Oh my god, and Hosa, he's just, he's such an artist, and he's just, he's so into his dancing. I can't, I can't, I don't know, uh, there's literally no words. Like, oh my god, he's beautiful, he like radiates just like the sun, he's literally the sun. He's literally the sun, he's like the bundle of joy, but he's also really rude. His facials were, oh my gosh, he literally gave face the whole time, and it was just, it was so distracting, like I couldn't stop looking at Hobie, oh my gosh. I was just, I'm so, I'm so Moving on, Park Jimin. I honestly, I don't have much to say about Park Jimin because I wish I could see his face more. His bucket hat was covering half of his face the whole time, so I pretty much only saw this much of his face and maybe part of his eyes. But from what I saw, from what I can tell, he's beautiful, he's talented, he's gorgeous. Um, but I don't think I would be, be ready. I don't think I would be prepared. I don't. Th I, I don't think I was ready for him to take off the bucket hat because he literally didn't so I, I, I think I was in the clear for him because I, th I looked at well Jimin was one of the per one of the members I looked at the least and I love Jimin okay it's just this bucket hat was covering his face I mean I looked at him obviously like I when I go to concerts I like to look at each of the members um, or like a group I like to look at each of the members with equal shine because I love all of them you know because you can't can't exclude any of them and yeah I wish I looked at Jim I wish I got to see Jimin's face more because I didn't, because his bucket hat was covering his face the whole damn time. Anyways, moving on. Kim Taehyung is literally a visual. He's stunning. He's so cute and hot at the same time with that fucking bandana. Oh, ban that bandana, though. Oh, him doing blood, sweat, and tears. He, oh my gosh, he was so into it. And, just... and then moving on to Cookie. Um, John John Gook, he's literally the cutest in person. He's literally the cutest. He's like a big baby. Oh my gosh, he, he well, he obviously, because he's at the Makne, but he's also, he looks like a baby, a big baby, a big muscular baby. I'm just like, oh my god. Like, he's, oh my, he's, he's, he's so cute in person. He's even cuter in person, like, what the, what the hell? But yeah, like I said, now I double bias Namjoon and Hosa because I can't choose. I was literally gonna leave Namjoon for Hosa right after that concert because I couldn't stop staring at him. I looked at Hosa more than Namjoon. Like, what? Bitch, what? He's such a distraction. Anyways, um, yeah. So now I have two biases in BTS because it's hard to have one. Um, I bias R M J Hope. R M J Hope. Kim Namjoon, Hosa. Kim Namjoon Hosa. Namjoon Hosa. They're literally everything. Oh my gosh. And then after the concert ended, uh, we went to In and Out. We were all waiting outside, and then we were just talking about our experiences. I wish that Kathy and Alira had a better experience, um, but they're gonna have a better experience today because they're gonna, they're gonna, they got chosen to be go see BTS at the Allen Show. So, so excited for them. I, I gave them a hug and everything. Like I, I wish they had it. It's just. Experience matters, you know, especially considering the fact that there's so many crazy armies there, and I'm an army, but there's just armies are crazy, and there there are rude ones at that. I mean, there's rude fans in every fandom, and it's just like wow. Now we all talked about our experience and everything. We we're all going off to BTS about missing BTS, like literally, that whole concert went by so fast, like it was o beyond overwhelming. Again, it was only like six songs, but it was just oh my god. And we we met another army um, at In and Out. She like literally came to us because she literally heard us talking about BTS. It was so cute. And then we made friends with her. Hey, girl. Um, and we took a picture. And then we were just ish. And her outfit was on point. And oh my gosh. I literally can ramble on and on. Like I literally, I'm literally a mess. Let me see what else I have to talk about. What else am I missing? I wish BTS... <laughs> I, I didn't have any eye contact with any of the members. Because there was literally so much people in the pit. And it was all pit. So it's really hard. I can imagine how hard it is to look at a fan, especially if they're in one huge cluster, in one huge group, um, 
you might see be able to see certain people and everything, but you won't be able to see all the fans because it's not very because we were all in such a huge group. Um, yeah, but there's always the next time for BTS. So the day after I left, went back home, I got really sad. Post-concert depression is so real. It's still real now till this day. It's getting worse and worse. Um, the day after, the day after I came back, I broke down crying on Snapchat. You'll probably see it again later. I'm literally a mess. Um, BTS, they're truly, they're so talented. They're, they're so humble too. You can just tell how humble BTS are, especially when they would be, uh, talking to us and everything. Um, in English with non like every every one of them it, they're so inspiring they changed my life so much this year um, I love Bangtan Song Yandan so much they they really did that I can't stop saying that BTS they really did that they're truly that group they're breaking barriers they're doing they're on some next level shit now being international getting all these gigs you wouldn't like get performing at the AMAs too and just they're they're literally l legends they're already legends even though 2017 was already BTS's year and they said that 2018 was even going to be it's even going to be bigger than this year i'm not ready like they they like this is already BTS's year what in the world they're going to 2018's also going to be BTS's year too Oh my gosh. I really, I... Uh, I miss them so much. I was literally, no joke, going to spend $300 on the EMAs just to see them perform one song. But I'm glad I didn't because this opportunity came out of nowhere and it was a great opportunity at that. And I love BTS so much. I love them so much. They... I can't wait to see them again in the future. I, I miss them so much. I, I, like, I don't even know what else to say. Like, I would do that. I would, I would love to relive that whole day over again, just from the beginning, just waiting, the anticipation, even though we would get impatient and everything. By the time the concert starts, it just, it goes by way too fast. I'm just like, wait, no, that, it's not over. Come back. Fashion was so on point. It was, it was a very high beast. Their whole fat, their whole look was just so high beast to me, but I was living for it. With the North Face and the Supreme, it was literally everything. And people were talking about how um, the fashion did not fill with Blood, Sweat, Tears, because I feel like Blood, Sweat, Tears, to get the full experience, they would have to wear those silk shirts and the pajamas and everything, that really sexy looks for Blood, Sweat, Tears for it to be complete, but it was it was still great regardless. Because Blood, Sweat, Tears should be performed in silk shirts, not in high beast clothing. <laughs> so... I really, oh wow, they just, I'm so, I'm beyond proud of BTS, I'm proud of them so, so from where they started to where they are now, they literally had nothing, and now they're, they have everything, they literally have everything, they literally have the world in the palm of their hands, with the whole, love myself UNICEF um, campaign how to end violence to literally have a voice for the world they literally have a voice loving their fans so much loving the army so much um, loving each other so much they're literally family they're not just the best of friends but they're literally family together like they literally we're all a family like Despite all the rude fans, all the problematic armies, what armies are usually known for, and I just I hate it when people shit on armies because, despite all the negatives, we're really, we're an amazing fandom. We, we, we really do. Stick. We do stick for each other. We 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 love each other. We hype each other up. We. We hype the boys up in like the best way possible, even though we have our jokes here and there. Um, again, besides all the negatives, like just getting all the negatives out of the way with the reputation the armies have that people like to shit on, anti, especially antis, they like to shit on armies and BTS for. I, I'm proud. I'm really proud of myself to call myself an army. Like I'm really, I'm so proud to be, be to be an army, and I was, I just, I love, 
I love being in this fandom. I've met so many wonderful people in this fandom. They literally changed my life so much. Not just BTS, but like the whole armies they've changed like I f it's really life changing to me to be a part of this it's a whole experience and I honestly don't know what else to say Kim Nam Joon, Kim So Jin, Min Yoon Gi, Jo Ho Sung, Park Ji Min, Kim Tae Hyung, Jeon Jung Gu, BTS <sighs> we're just gonna stop here and I'm going to include footage from that night. And you're going to love the footage because I went off crazy. Pretty much practically almost lo pretty much lost my voice. But I took Tylenol that night so my voice wasn't as bad but it was still hoarse the day after. But yeah, I'm going to include footage and everything and pictures. So be sure to look till the end right after this. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Comment, comment. You know, comment. Leave comments down below. And this whole this whole video is a mess. I went all over the place, but I really hope I really do show justice on how much I love Bangtan. Oh, kings, legends, legends only. Your fave could never. I'm sorry, I went there. Your fave could never. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh my god!
us on that day. after the BTS concert and I miss BTS so much I really do like 
I, I haven't cried yesterday. Now I'm just like, uh, I really miss BTS so much. I really don't. Like, they have, they really did that, you know? Like, they really, they really did that. Like, I have no words to say. I, the post-concert depression just got worse today. And I'm just, <sighs> I really miss, basically.